a lot. <laughs> We're reviewing over 200 minis. <laughs> I just got my pre-order of the most recent Epic Encounter box, which means I have all 20 options available. And today, we're going to unbox them to find out which one's the best one for you. I'm Tatiana Volk, the GM Witch, and let's get into this. All right, now it's time to open these all up. miniatures from the first nine sets. Let's unbox the pre-order that I just got and that I've been waiting for to do this video. There are 202 minis, 10 sets, 20 boxes, and then 10 big boss large minis, plus a bunch of battle maps, booklets, and tokens galore. Because there are just so many minis, we're just gonna be doing a overview in this video, but if you would like a deeper dive or more information about each individual minis, I will be doing painting videos of each set. So include your questions down below if you want to see anything specific for any of these boxes. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get into what you can expect from each box. Six of the Infiltree sets come with 20 miniatures. Starting with the sets that have 20 minis in the Infiltree box, we have Village of the Goblin Chief and Swamp of the Hydra which obviously has a hydra and some swamp goblins. Here we have Shrine of the Kobold Queen and Lair of the Red Dragon featuring a bunch of fire kobolds and a red fire dragon. Then we have Hall of the Orc King and Caverns of the Frost Giant, which has a nice snowy winter feeling for the orcs and the frost giant. Here's Chambers of the Serpent Folk and Temple of the Snake God, which has a nice Egyptian desert serpent theme going on. Labyrinth of the Goblin Tsar and Web of the Spider Tyrant with a under dark spider theme. And here we have Arena of the Undead Horde and Tower of the Lich Empress with lots of undead skeletons and our Lich. The Hive of the Ghoul King is the set with the least amount of miniatures at 15 miniatures. For our smallest set, we have Hive of the Ghoul King and Burrow of the Corpse Crawler, which features several types of ghouls and a giant worm monster. The Island of the Crab Archon not sure how to pronounce that, has the most miniatures at 21 miniatures. We have Island of the Crab Archon and Cove of the Dragon Turtle, which has this sort of sea monstrosity theme along with our Dragon Turtle. And then Camp of the Bandit Twins and Step of the Lizard Thane. Each are too shy of the 20, both coming in at 18 each. Then we have Camp of the Bandit Twins and Cave of the Manticore. This is another winter themed set with a bunch of bandits, an earth elemental, and our manticore. We have Step of the Lizard Thane and Nest of the Dinosaur. We have a jungle vibe with lizard folk and our two-headed dinosaur, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Some quick facts. Each set is two boxes sold separately or in a bundle. One of the boxes in the sets comes with a big boss mini, and the second box comes with thematically matching infantry minis. 
They both have their own adventure booklets with information on how to run an encounter with each set and they do work independently. And they both come with a double-sided map to use for the encounter, which as you can see folds out to be a larger scale map. If you just wanted to get the big boss, they usually come with some tokens that you can punch out and use in place of the infiltry minis. Sometimes you'll get some cool additional things like a hydra counter for the hydra, uh, different types of swarms or traps. Most of the minis are already assembled. Our red dragon does come with the wings separately. If you do have to assemble, they recommend dipping them in warm or hot water to help with the assembly process or else it can be very difficult trying to get them to fit together. Our giant spider does come separate from the base, but this one's very easy to attach and it kind of sticks together pretty well once you do attach it. The lich comes with four little separate magical skull bits that pop into place and are pretty easy to fall out. And then our giant comes separate from the base. I actually did a unboxing video with this and struggled quite a bit trying to put this together, but I wasn't aware of the warm water trick at that time, which should make the process significantly easier. And we will test that out on camera in a minute. And the last one that's currently out right now that doesn't come completely assembled would be the manticore, which has a separate tail piece that slots right in. But for the most part, it's all very straightforward. In addition to that, all of the infiltry minis are fully assembled and every single thing has a base. I have yet to paint any of these because I wanted to do this video first, but I do plan on doing a batch painting series for these moving forward since I do want to paint all of them and start using them in my games. I have yet to run one one of the adventures, but I have attempted to prep for one. And although I'm really excited about the adventures in general, and you can see a deeper dive in my original video, one of the issues that I realized is even though you can adjust the adventures for lower or higher level parties, they don't really feel well suited for lower levels because I would have to take a lot of things out, which will make it arguably less cool and so I ended up putting these on hold and waiting until my group is a little bit stronger especially because I am running for a party of two so things are already a little more difficult for them. Another thing that I noticed when trying to prep with the epic encounter adventures is that the CR rating on the monsters in each encounter doesn't line up as well as I would like to fit in for the games. So for instance, you can have the Cobalt base adventure from Shrine of the Cobalt Queen with the toughest monster being a challenge rating four, which is then supposed to be followed up with Lair of the Red Dragon with the toughest variation of the dragon at challenge rating 24. And the weakest version of the Red Dragon, a young Red Dragon at a challenge rating 10. Now, it is true if your party is higher levels, you could probably beef this bad boy up quite a bit so that they can run through these guys before making it to the red dragon, and I think that would be a great way of utilizing them together. But if you're trying to figure out a way to drop all of these into your campaign and have them work together for massively different levels of characters, there's just going to be a lot more legwork on your end to really make that work. Now on the flip side, the books are very flexible. And so it isn't super difficult for you to modify things to make them work for your game. There's a ton of really great advice and tips and tricks 
and obviously encounter builds and location builds and things like that that you can utilize. So for most situations, these should all work perfectly, especially if you're just planning on using one set for your game instead of trying to find a way to fit every single one in. You could probably use a couple of different sets as they do vary in the challenge ratings of the monsters, but unless you want to sacrifice some design, it is difficult using them for lower level parties. And I personally just didn't want to make those sacrifices. And so I ended up not using them when I wanted to. Let's assemble the three of these that need some more finessing and then start laying these out and comparing them. Let's do this. So I have the dragon here and the wings. What you can put them in place on their own. They don't go in super smoothly. This is just water from the sink that's hot. And I know for a fact that these don't line up very well. If you lined these two up, this one will not match. So you have those two. And then as you can see, the hole is still visible because it's not lined up. Let's see if some hot from the sink water will be enough. It might need to be hotter than this, especially because it's not like burning hot anymore. Okay, so now let's do this foot. Okay, well, that was very easy. Now is it very easy because of the hot water? <laughs> <laughs> or was it very easy because I've done it before through sheer might? Anyway, that was, yeah, that was super easy. Okay, let's see if we can get a better bond for this. Mm, yeah, it has closed up that gap a little bit, but there's still a gap there in general. And again, I don't think my water is all that hot. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember this one, the second wing, is not easy to go in, and it's still not. Yeah, I imagine if it was hotter, it may have been easier, but I did get it in. I had to push it quite a lot though, so some of that was sheer force. But in general, I would say the water trick works. So if you're struggling, try some warm slash hot from the tap water, and that'll help. If you're struggling even more, you might even try and get hotter water, because I feel like this wing did struggle because it was cooling down quite a bit. Okay, so now we're gonna quickly go through the CR ratings of all of the miniatures in each of the boxes so you have an idea of what to expect if you're planning on getting any one of these. In Village of the Goblin Chief, we have a 1 4, a 2, another 1 4, another 1 4, a 3, and a 4. For the Hydra, there are some stats for the Infiltry, which in the case of the bosses, the extra stats are provided as tokens if you just buy the boss box or you can utilize the minis from the infiltry box in place of the tokens if you have them. But we're gonna focus on the variants of the boss. So we have a challenge eight, a challenge 13, and a challenge 20. For Shrine of the Cobalt Queen, we have a one eighth, a one, a one half, a three, two more ones, and a four. For Lair of the Red Dragon, we have the stats of the tokens. Then we have a challenge 10 variant, a 17 variant, and the 24 variant. For Step of the Lizard Thane, we have a one half, another one half, a two, another one half, another two, a three, and a four. For its companion, Nest of the Dinosaur, we have a challenge eight variant, challenge 13, and a challenge 17. We also have a one fourth that is not included in the companion set, so there is no mini for this one. Hive of the Ghoulkin, we have a challenge one, two more challenge ones, a challenge two, a challenge five, and a challenge eight. Burrow of the Corpse Crawler, we have an eight variant, a 15 variant and a 21 variant along with the stats for one of these minis. Chamber of the Serpent Folk, we have a three, a seven, five, another three, four, and a 10. Temple of the Snake God, a couple of minis from the other set, a challenge eight, a challenge 13, and the final variant, a challenge 17. Labyrinth of the Goblins, Star, we have a one fourth, a one half, a one, another one half, which we don't have a mini for this, but there are tokens. Then we have a one, four, three, a two, 
and finally a five. Web of the Spider Tyrant, you have a Challenge 6 variant, a Challenge 13, and a Challenge 18. And then we have some minis from the other set. Hall of the Orc King, we have a one half, a two, a couple ones, another one, another two, another two, and finally a four. Taverns of the Frost Giant, we have stats for the tokens, a challenge eight variant, a challenge 13, and finally a 17. Island of the Crab Archon, we have a one eighth, a one half, a one, a two, a three, an eight, a six, and a 12. This might be the most variation that there is available in a single book. Following it up with Cove of the Dragon Turtle. We have a Challenge 7 variant, a Challenge 10, and a Challenge 17. We also have the Dragon Turtle Hatchlings at a Challenge 1, which doesn't have any miniatures in either box. For the newest box, we have Camp of the Bandit Twins, which we have a 1 8th, another 1 8th, a 1 half, a 3, another 3, a 4, and a 4. For Cave of the Manticore, we have a Challenge 3 variant, a 10, and a 17. For Arena of the Undead Horde, we have a 1 fourth, a one, a three, a two, another three, another two, and a seven. And lastly, Tower of the Lich Empress. We have several stats from the other set, and then we get into a 13 variant, a 17 variant, and lastly, a 21 variant. All right, and that is it for today's video. I have wanted to do this for the longest time. This video is not sponsored, but I do want to give a big shout out thank you to Steamforged Games for sending me some of these sets for free. I did purchase a good chunk of them myself, but they still helped make this happen. So thank you again. And now that I moved and have a bigger space for everything, it's going to be a lot easier for me to actually utilize and take advantage of these. So if you would like to see some painting videos in the future with a little bit more deep dives into each individual ones, definitely stay tuned for that. And if you would like to check out the first two that I did a deep dive first impressions review for, you can catch those here. Include a spider emoji down below if you made it this far, and I will catch you in the next video. Until then. Bye! Oh my god! <laughs>